Hello everyone. We have Hemanand here with us and we, I and Hemanand will be working on the incremental feedback that you all provided in our last video. So just to summarize, uh, this is part of the Sales Insight uh, Power BI project series. And if you have not seen previous videos, please go watch those videos first. In, uh, I think last, in two videos before we built a Power BI dashboard, uh, which captures the sales insights. And uh, then I ask all of you to provide your feedback as a stakeholder. So we are just assuming that we have shared Power BI dashboard with different stakeholders in the company, which is Atlic Hardware, and people are giving their feedback through Power BI comment. And in this video, we'll take one comment at a time and we both will try to address this feedback. Now we are a data masters team. Hemanand is uh, my manager. He's a senior data analyst. I'm a junior data analyst who probably doesn't know much about Power BI. So he will uh, try to teach certain things to me as well while addressing the feedback. Just to give you the background, Hemanand is a senior. Uh, he's in fact, he is promoted as a data analyst manager. He worked for Edgewell, uh, which is based in UK. He worked for a few years in Germany before. He brings lots of expertise and he is an expert in Power BI. So the conversation that we will, will be having will sound almost like a conversation that you will have in a normal corporate environment when you're brainstorming in a conference room. Uh, we'll try to give you that feel uh, by having this video. So I will share my screen first and try to address uh, the first comment that the viewers are having. So the first comment, Heman, you can see the screen, right? Yes, yes, I do. Okay, so the first comment is, in the last video, we generated a normalized sales amount from sales amount, but we actually did not use it. So part Patodi, thank you very much. Actually, this was a bug. Uh, this was a, an error or a mistake which I made uh, in my uh, dashboard. And usually in a corporate environment, this kind of errors will happen. And once, once people start using it, they will start giving the feedback. So I'm going to address now your feedback. So uh, in, in my Power BI dashboard here, I have a revenue. And you can see in revenue, I'm using sales amount. But if you look at uh, our columns, see in, we have some transaction in USD and my current dashboard is using 250, which is not good because it should be using this amount, which is normalized to INR currency. Okay. Uh, so let me just use that here. So it's very simple. You click on revenue here and instead of sales amount, you just say normalize sales amount. Okay. And when you hit enter, it will try to refresh uh, your dashboard. Now here, some problem happen. You can see C details. So I will debug further and I will try to see why is it not showing me those values. So I go here and when I click on normalize sales amount, I find that the data type is text. So this has to be a number. So I will just convert it to a decimal number, click on yes. And then when I go to my dashboard, it is refreshing. And now it is showing me the amount in, now it is using normalized amount to render my numbers. You might not see a big difference because we had only two USD transaction, but if you drill down further, those transactions were in year 2017 in the month of November. So in the month of November, right now you see 35.05 and what we previously had, if you just had sales amount, You see, there is a some there is some difference you are seeing 35.00. So norm sales amount is the correct thing. Thanks very much, Mr. Pao Patodi, for your excellent feedback. I'm now going to stop my screen share and then now Hemanan will take over. He will address the rest of the comments. Yeah. So Hemanan, you can share Thank your you. screen. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Gaurav, first of all, uh, for this for this experience. I mean, more than uh, more than like uh, <laughs> sharing with people, I would say I've learned a lot uh, over this uh, this project. I mean, and uh, it's really happy to see a lot of people are you know, 
sending you messages uh, in, in LinkedIn or something like that and saying they, re they really found it helpful. That was very rewarding to, for, for doing this entire project. Thanks for involving me in this. Um, well, thank you for all your hard work, actually. <laughs> you are the one who created this project. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fine. All right, so let me share my screen now. You see the screen? Yep. All right, so let's see the comment from Vijay Anand. Mm -hmm. Hi, our sales are declining. What is your opinion suggestion as an analyst to increase our profit? Or what is the decision you would suggest to pick up our, your business? Okay. I mean, normally Vijay, this is this is this is more like a question that uh, the sales director would discuss with sales managers, not with an analyst. But there are a few cases where the analyst is involved in the meeting. And the analyst provides an insight, okay, I have this data and I can provide you this kind of insight. For example, in this particular case, our sales are declining, which, which is kind of related to the order data. If your sales are inclining, which means the number of orders that you are getting is declining. And uh, which means there is, there is a big customer, which I've been giving you a lot of orders, is not giving you the orders right now. So if you found out which customer is it, or is it which, which region or which uh, particular market is driving this chain, uh, you would you would be able to answer this question, and uh, normally it's it's answer that's provided by the sales managers from the particular region and or for the particular markets. And I I just see a you know a, a very good input from Jagan Info, where he says yeah it, it definitely depends on the product quality, promotion, advertising, very good point, discounts, healthy communication between management suppliers, product attraction, packaging. Identify which areas of product to be saved. Yes, yes. All, all, all these are very good points made by Jagan Info. If you could just go back to the dashboard, I would like to mention one more point here. So you can see the sales is steadily declining. If you could see the trend, it's, it's just going down uh, for the last three months or for the last four months. And uh, I just want to see for 2020 here. It's steadily declining. You, you can say, I mean, um, based on the current scenario because the market is dynamic because you are into the retail market. So there could be a lot of changes going in the market. So if the, the main reason could be the COVID situation that we are having. That could be one of the reasons that you might hear from sales managers. And normally how they do is like all the sales managers and all the sales planners, they would combine together their insights in form of root causing or in form of something else. So they would have a log where they enter, okay, fine, this is the level one of root causing and this is the level two. And they would write some comments next to that. So what happens after that is like these comments would consolidate, would aggregate to a certain level. And then you would start finding patterns. For example, the customer one, customer three, customer five did not order a lot because of X. And uh, this market is not performing well. Not just one market, five or six markets does not perform well because of this root cause. So this is the power of consolidating your root cause and then you would be able to find the patterns. So once you find the patterns, you are able to take decision. This is like what you call a data-driven decision. Okay, perfect. That's a good point. And once they uh, take the decision, do they have a way to record that decision on Power BI somewhere? I guess no, yes. right? Yes, you can. You can? I mean, you can't, you can't, yes, you can, you can. You can't use just Power BI for that. There is a, like I, I mentioned in the previous uh, meeting, uh, there, were, there is this Microsoft suite, which contains Power BI and Power Apps. So Power App is a place where you can record all your comments, you can, uh, you can decisions, you can send it to your SQL server. For example, let's say I'm seeing this data. I click on this stores and I can write some comments here. I can say, okay, this sales is very good because of X and Y. So I select X and Y from a drop down list and the next person who's doing the same activity will select Y and Z. So if I combine all the Y and if I combine all the Z, I would know why the sales are good and I would know why the sales are not good. And you can record all of that and retrieve it back later. That's possible. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Very good. Uh, we can move yeah, on to the uh, next one. Cool. And really, uh, really kudos to uh, Jagan Info, really good insights. Thanks, yes. Thanks for doing that. Yes. So Jagan, thank you uh, from my side as well, because you have really engaged really well with this project. You have tried to help other people. You have tried to ask many. I think we'll go over one of your questions, which is also very, very uh, important question. So thanks for your help on this yeah. project. Okay, Tamil Kumar is 
thanks for the complete series, man. Thank you, Dawal. Thank you again. It mm -hmm. would be better if we play around with product cause and margin related transaction and detail customer information. It's it's a very good uh, question, Tamil Kumar, because of course, whatever information you provide is just a very basic information. It does not, it's just a facade of your company. It doesn't provide, okay, what's, what's inside the building, what's, what's actually going wrong or, or what's actually going good until you know the product cost or until you know the, you know, the, the gross margin and stuff like that. So, which is why I have added two more columns now to the sales transaction table. Uh, let me show it here. So if you would go to your sales transaction table now, so the world would also update it to the SQL. So you would, you would get it there. So there is, there is a thing called profit margin. So how much profit margin you're making from each uh, product that you sold to the customer in the, for the particular transaction and uh, what is the cost price? So these things, these things you would get. I mean, normally you won't get the cost price or the profit margin as a straight away in, in a company. I've just consolidated to make it, uh, to make it for the educational purpose much easier. So normally you would have something like the gross margin and uh, for the cost price, you would have a manufacturing cost, cost, cost of goods sold, and you would have a lot of uh, other deflators like discounts and stuff like that. So we could all combine together to give you this result. So I've, I've just given it all of so that to, to not make it very complex. Right. So, so well, what do you think we can build? Like, uh, it's a very good question from Tamu. And uh, what do you think would be interesting for uh, for our sales director to see from the cost or, or to see from the profit? Right. So, since now I have a, a cost and margin, um, basically yeah. I can have like a per market margin or per customer margin or yeah. uh, or a profit or a loss. Uh, yeah. point uh, being plotted on this visualization because there could be some customer who might be giving me more margin and there could be some customer where I might be losing uh, uh, money. Uh, so yeah. I want to get insights on who those customers are, how much is that margin amount. Uh, so that okay. having that would be really helpful. Perfect. So let's, let's try to uh, create a second page now and try to put those insights like what you have disclosed. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, copy pasting is a very important skill. Like, like yes. <laughs> so I would I would normally do like this. I would always have a base page and duplicate that page and then try to alter that in the way I want because I really don't like setting everything up from the beginning. And some people prefer that way, but I just prefer you know copy pasting stuff and then doing mm -hmm. some primitive changes on those. All right. So let's. Uh, okay, you let. I think the main point that we want to understand is like the profit margin percentage per per uh, market. And uh, let's try to create a, a new measure that's, that we call as a profit margin. So this is going to be a very simple measure. Or let's call it total profit margin. So it's going to be some of all your profit margin. And this is going to be um, in INR. They have this long list and sometimes even I uh, find INR to be... I, I, I find it very really hard here actually. Yeah, okay, but it's all good. Cool. So, and then I would have it in one decimal. So you can immediately see your total profit. What I can do is like, let me squeeze this a little bit. And I just copy pasted this visual and uh, I'm going to replace this with the total profit margin. So you immediately know that your total profit margin for 2020 is 2 million rupees. And uh, what I'm going to do here is like, I'm going to put profit margin instead of revenue. Or let's say it's, uh, what is more interesting to see the profit margin or uh, the total profit margin or the percentage of profit margin? I think the percentage is more interesting. For me. Percentage is more interesting, yes. Yeah, so I would, I would create a new measure. You can also take it from, you know, from the column that you have, but I would like to have it a new measure because I would use measure, uh, this measure in uh, multiple places. Uh, let's say profit. 
margin percentage. And uh, it's again a simple formula. You divide uh, your profit margin, total profit margin, by the revenue, and that would give you uh, the. I'm putting a zero if, in case there is no revenue for the particular product, it would still return zero percentage. Yeah. And this is going to be in percentage. And I'll just make it happen. So I'll bring my profit margin percentage in. And uh, I'm going to change the units. I'm going to make it auto. Perfect. And you immediately see that. Uh, the profit margin is uh, Bhuvaneshwar is the one that's topping with the profit margin. So mm. it's providing you the 10.5% of profit margin, not Delhi. I mean, Delhi is, is getting you the highest revenue, but it's not getting you the highest. This is a very good insight. People normally think when they see the big revenue, they normally think, okay, fine, this is giving me, uh, this is the biggest market. But you can see Bhuvaneshwar is a really good place where you can sell more. You can, you can optimize your sales more there, or you can introduce more. Uh, discounts or you can introduce more stores or more contractors and retailers and things like that yeah because you are getting more roi roi is basically return on investment yeah so if you are yeah. selling let's say ten a hundred dollar worth of item you are getting ten dollar yeah. profit whereas in delhi yeah. you are getting only 0.6 so uh, it, this is very interesting by the way i never realized that Bhuneshwar will be the entry market that i yeah. should be focusing on <laughs> yeah so yeah it's already very exciting because even before i mean like when i first saw the dashboard if you, if you just go to the first dashboard here if you just look at the margin it's like 77.3 million that's like the highest contributor and but it's not it's not giving uh, it's it's not a place where you get uh, best returns yeah but this does not still give you a complete picture if you ask me because no. uh, you still don't know how much profit percentage it contributes to the total profit percentage. Mm. So if, if I if I repeat the thing, it's a bit complex. So let's say uh, you have uh, different markets mm. and you want to know how much this market is contributing to your entire 2 million. Mm. So that's something you would like to know. Mm. So I would like to create a measure which is called, how do you want to call it? Uh, profit margin contribution percentage. Mm. So this measure, so how do you, how do you call uh, the profit margin in percentage? You want to divide your profit margin for that particular market by the total profit margin. Okay. So that's, that's a concept, right? So for example, if you, if you make a profit of five rupees in Delhi, and if your total uh, profit is 50 rupees, so you, you divide it five by 10. Yes. So it says, okay, your profit margin is 10%. So again, that's why I'm going to divide my revenue so this is this is why dax is very powerful you don't have to do it for each market you don't have to do it for uh, each location or each product so once you take the total revenue uh, measure that you created and once you put it in a place where there are revenue, where there are uh, customers it will slice according to the customers and if you put it in a place where there are products it will slice according to the product that's that's why it's very powerful right okay. And so uh, now mm -hmm. for for the people who don't know uh, the language that Hemanand is using which is the divide and all that that is called dax d a x and in the video description below i'm going to link a course which will give you understanding on how dax overall that's a very good course which was recommended by Hemanand so please yeah. uh, go watch that course yeah go ahead yes, Hemanand yes please yeah please uh, go for that course it's it's really uh, it's really an introduction level and it's it's very important i mean if you want to really uh, i mean power bi is not just about building visualizations it's about providing the insights it's it, it's, it's dax is the one that really uh, drives those insights so if you want to um, you know build your expertise in power bi dax is the place where you start with mm -hmm. all right so i'm again so i'm i want to measure the revenue by so so not the revenue uh, I want to measure the the total profit margin of a particular market. So by the total profit margin, right? So this is where I have to write a different formula where I say total profit margin. And this time I want to 
aggregate at all the customer level. I want to aggregate at the, all the product level, and I want to aggregate at all mm, what are the dimensions we have market level. So these these three other dimensions that we have, I want to aggregate at all these levels. So what I would say is like aggregate all product, which is my um, product dimension. Aggregate it all customer. This is my customer dimension. And aggregate it all. Mm, sorry, what is the markets? The market dimension. So this will provide me the profit margin contribution. to make it a percentage. Okay, we've got a new insight again. Mm -hmm. So Mumbai is contributing to 23.4% of all your profit, which is okay. around 24%. Do you want to change the title as well? It says sales quantity yeah. by market. Yes. I want to change the title. So everyone, uh, I, we have discussed in previous videos as well. You can go to this place and change the visual properties of your uh, visualization of your chart. So right now, Hamandand is yeah. modifying the title of the first yeah. chart, and then he will do the same thing for. So you click on that, go on the right hand side. You know, you, actually, you go to the correct place yeah. to make a modification. I mean, there's there's a lot of way to do this uh, while I'm typing. You can you can also make it dynamic. You don't have to change it every time. You can create some formulas where uh, let's say if you select 2019, it already shows 2019 here in the title. So mm -hmm. that your title is very interactive and also shows a different title. So you can do that by pressing the set button, and you just have to create one more formula. It says wow. okay, fine. when you select 2019, it says 2019. That, that's something you can do, and it's and it's very it's very let's say it's very uh, not very complex to create them. Yes. Yeah. All right. So I do not want this image here just to reduce the size. And, uh, right. So though that's very interesting. If you if you look at that, uh, Mumbai is like really at the top of the contribution. So mm -hmm. Mumbai is your biggest market, not Delhi actually. It in terms of profit, the actual profit that it is generating to your company. Mumbai is providing much, much more profit than, uh, than, than Delhi. And if you think about how much revenue that Mumbai is generating, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's quite in the second place, but not, not in terms of, uh, you know, in terms of profit. Profit, yeah. yeah. So another good point, like if I'm, my company is making $100 profit, 20, almost $24 comes from Mumbai and 22 yeah. comes from Delhi. So although Delhi is yeah. biggest market in terms of revenue, in terms of profit, yeah. Mumbai is a good market. So maybe I should focus more on Mumbai, so like how I was doing for Bhuvaneshwar, because that that is giving me more profit. Or another thing, way of looking at it is, I can look at my operations in Mumbai and I can see why yeah. Mumbai is generating more uh, more profit compared to other markets. And maybe yeah. I can use the same discount from Mumbai or I can use the same sales strategy from that region uh, so that I can duplicate that strategy to other regions and totally. hopefully increase profit in those areas. Totally. Yeah, I'm just curious now, though. I'm, I'm just intrigued to see what is the revenue share for each market. Hmm. Because right now we have the profit share and hmm. profit contribution share. I would like to know the, the revenue uh, contribution share. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to create a new measure. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to copy paste guys. So I'm going to copy paste this. So revenue contribution percentage.
So instead of total profit margin, I just I'm just going to change it to revenue. Okay. So. Change the title. Okay, so this is a revenue contribution uh, by percentage. Yeah. So, Heman, for our viewers, would you tell yes. uh, would you tell the difference between on the on the, our initial dashboard, we had that first yeah. chart. If you go to our first page, mm -hmm. so here also I'm seeing revenue by market. So here I'm seeing yeah. absolute revenue, which is seventy seven million yeah. and so on. Yeah. Versus what you created is actually percentage of total revenue, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. What, 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 it, what it says is like the least contributing. So your, your revenue is 142 million, the least contributing about 50%, which is like 71 million rupees of revenue is coming from Delhi. Okay. But, but is 50% of profit coming from Delhi? No. Okay. Delhi is providing only 22% of profit, hmm. which, is, which is a very uh, interesting thing to know. And uh, what, is, what is quite surprising is like, uh, you can see a place like, let's say, Nagpur. So it's contributing to almost 10% of your revenue, mm. but in terms of profit, it's, it, it's just 5.8%. Mm. So you can see these are the places where you can really improve. Because ideally the, the revenue should be, you know, like somewhat uh, proportional to what profit it is making. Right. But in some markets you have a different strategy because you want to, uh, you, are, you don't have the first mover uh, advantage. So you are trying to uh, give a lot of discounts, you know, even if you have a negative margin, I've known I've known many companies, many startups. They they are still in loss. They haven't started making profit, but they still you know generate a lot of revenue there, even though they make uh, you know negative sales. But that's that's a strategy. It, it depends upon how your strategy works. But I don't think uh, our sales director is happy with this uh, thing. We he wants yeah. more. Uh, he wants more uh, the profit more to be proportional to the revenue that they're making. I mean I, I just want to uh, to just maintain the continuity. I will just move the revenue to here. So it, it's always in the left and uh, profit percentage, and the profit contribution next, and the profit percentage in the market. So I'm, I'm, for me, this is, this is not even interesting. For me, the more interesting thing would be to show, feed at the customer level. I wanna see all this info for the customer, hmm. how, how it's working. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna delete this product. I'm not really interested in the product now. Hmm. So, what I would do is like uh, make it like a, a table visual. Table. And this is my revenue, and uh, I'm just gonna make my revenue like the same format. I wish they had some search box <laughs> for yeah. the. Totally, that's really annoying. Yeah, and I want to know the. So what we see right now is like a uh, list of all the customers. So if you want to know which customers create you the, the biggest revenue, live, live top five, top 10, you can see all of this here. So you just click this button it shows you all the customers from the top. And if you mm. want to see the bottom most customers, mm. you can just click here. It just shows you the bottom most customers. And that's my revenue. But I'm, I'm more interested in the profit margin contribution. Mm. So I want to see which customer has given me the biggest profit. 
So of all the 2.1 million profit I've made in 2020, Excel stores have provided me 12.5%, which is my biggest customer. So mm -hmm. I can say this is my de facto biggest customer along with search stores. So these are my A list of customers, the top three are my A list of customers, where I would have special kind of discounts for them, where I would be more, uh, you know, ease with the contracts that I make with them. I can, I can be like, if they say, okay, they want to make some changes, I'm like, okay, because they, they, they make me profit. I mean, at the end, you really care about how your company is represented in the Wall Street, right? You want to know how much profit it is making. That, that, that's the thing. And uh, I mean, there is a very good insight here. The third customer you see, Electrical Sara Stores. So you provide them with a very less profit margin. For example, if you, if you, sell, them, uh, if you sell them an item for 104 rupees, uh, you, you just, uh, sorry, if you, you just create a product for 100 rupees and you sell them to sell to them for 100.40. That's that's the that's the margin you make. You have the lowest one of the lowest margins here, yeah. but still they provide you the highest profit, which means they have given you a lot of orders. Exactly, the sales yeah. volume in terms of absolute yeah. amount is yeah. high. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's why even with a very very less profit margin, the profit contribution margin is is super high. So this exactly. is again a thing to look at you decide how you want to keep your customer. If they are giving you a lot of orders, yes, you give them a lot of discount, you keep your profit margin low, and they pro they bring back the profit anyway to the company. They, they provide the profit anyway back. And uh, I mean, customers are really, I'm concerned. I want to look at the bottom of those. So this one, this store is, is providing, I'm, I'm, I'm giving to them in the negative. For every product I sell them, I, I, I make a product for 100 rupees and I sell to them for 89.5 rupees. That's, that's a loss every time on average. And they don't even bring back, uh, of course, they won't bring back revenue if their uh, profit margin is negative. So it's, it's, it's something to look at. Or, or I want to drive from this market. Let's say uh, I want to sort uh, by profit margin. So I want to see from the market. So Lucknow is providing me two points. 7% negative margin. So when I click look, I see which customer have them. I think there is only one customer we have. Okay, not a lot. Yeah, so this is only one customer creating me negative. Uh, maybe I drop this customer. I don't really want to continue with the customer. I, or I, exactly. I expand aggressively. So these, these are the insights that we can uh, provide for our sales. Thank you, thank you, Tamil. This is a very good uh, platform you gave us to understand. I'm really interested to, to look more into the data, but uh, due to the time concern, I'll pro pro proceed to the next thing. Uh, was, what, yeah. do, what do you think? Like, do you have any more insights to add? No, I think that this tabular view, I'm finding it really useful. And then yeah. uh, doing like two dimensional al analysis is important. We have profit margin yeah. and profit margin contribution. Yeah. So although electrical Sara store, our profit margin was very narrow, yeah. the absolute yeah. profit was still significant. So I should be focusing. Yeah. So having this kind exactly. of like two dimensional uh, analysis yeah. is actually yeah. very, very important. But yeah, yeah. What, you can then, yeah. what you can, uh, Tamil, if you're interested, what you can uh, proceed is like create kind of a basket analysis. So you can uh, you know, use a combination of profit margin and profit contribution percentage and your revenue, whatever key metrics you want to have. And you can classify uh, your ABC customers. So if, if the percentage is this, this and this, this is my A customer. If my percentage is this, this, and this, it is my B customer. So, or you can have the percentiles. You can create a list of all the things, and you can say my top ten person customer is A customer, and next is B. And you can C. create tiers yeah. basically, tier A, tier exactly. B, and so on. Yeah. That's what companies normally do. And for tier A, they have certain kind of contracts, and tier B, they have certain kind of discounts and contracts. This is exactly how it works in in, in the retail company. Yep. All right. Let me go back to the next question. Right. Um, there is one from Gaurav Kumar. Hmm. Hi, first, thanks for doing this project and sharing knowledge as in follow all your, all your videos. We built similar kind of dashboard for your company. And, but it was five years back in Excel. Yes, I think Excel is a starting place for everyone. Hmm. As being service integrator, dashboard hotline, sales accounts, on the bookings, revenue, profitability, CSAT, product and service is good. Again, what's the standard versus non-standard product? Yes, services in the market, yes. yes. Performance, churn, yeah, great. Okay, I think I think uh, he, he's just making a you know a feedback, a, a, more like a comment here. Yeah, what he says is like uh, what he says is the evolution of Excel to 
to this advanced analytics and uh, how things have changed. That's what I understand from him. Like he say that uh, able to do a lot of things, it, it kind of uh, does the work of 10 people of what it used to be before. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I, as we added a pro product margin and the other column yeah. that we added, you can add so many more columns. I mean, in data yeah. science, we call them features or dimensions. Yes. You can add so many dimensions you did to your data and then you can do almost like infinite level of analytics. So you go to mention it rightly, all these parameters and key performance metrics you have mentioned. Uh, definitely, if we have data, we can integrate and we can create like more pages in our Power BI dashboard and use it for yeah. our benefit. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. What would be interesting is, Gauri, if you if you have uh, you know interest, if you if you have to add some data to the database and then you know create some dashboard and show it to the community, that would be great. I mean, uh, from your yeah. from your comment, it looks like you have a lot of experience in doing this stuff. You know, you exactly. So you can. You can maybe take this data, add more yes. columns, yeah. build dashboards. Yeah. And you know how we are having a session with Haman and maybe I can have a session with Gaur of you and we can yeah. cover all these metrics as well. My email yes, is yes, learnpythonlanguage at gmail.com. So if you are interested in contributing this to this project, uh, send me an email. But now we can move right. on to the next comment. Yeah. All right. Hi, thanks for the project. Can I get to know the top 10 customer product sales? Okay, and uh, density graph first line. Okay, second line for that. All right. Um, yeah, this is a question from Arun Yana Uh Thank you, Arun. I, I think we already have the top 10 customers. Um, yes. With product sales. If I understand your question correctly. And the density graph you're asking for, it's, um, yeah, there is something, I'm not sure if this is what exactly you're looking into, but I can show something with Bob Yeah. So, so this is my top customer, right? What I can simply do is like uh, use this graph. So it kind exactly. of creates a density here and uh, you can you can play with, you can put different parameters here and see what you want to look at and uh, you know change accordingly to what you need. Uh, and if, if our answer is not clear, I mean, uh, if the answer is not sufficient, please, uh, please elaborate with more details, we can, can definitely get back to that. Yep, yep. Let's move on to the next one now. Okay, Tirtha Tanai Mandal. Hello, Gaurav. I want to know following things from the dashboard. Breakdown of sales for brick and mortar versus e-commerce e customers. customers. Yep, that's very easy to do. Very good. Yeah, and top five customers with highest number of orders. All right, and uh, for which zones I need to hire fire sales? He's in a firing <laughs> mode. <laughs> yeah. yeah, people are I going to lose job is, now. <laughs> <laughs> I want a dynamic red alert in dashboard in our performance of certain zone. Oh, this is great. Uh, he wants a dynamic red alert in the dashboard. I mean, we can have that red alerts based on some parameters, based on some targets. But if you want dynamic, there is a kind of a parameter that you can introduce and you can use it as a slicer to, to, to see the changes. I mean, that's something we can try now and I'm really excited to try that. And uh, let's see, let's try to answer the first question. And yeah. the second question, I'm, I'm sorry, we do not have the order information. So that, that is, if you see in any company, the order table is the most detailed table and it will be the biggest table. It will contain at least 10 million to, you know, 10 million is the least I would say. Because for each order, you would have multiple, you know, order header, you would have multiple items, multiple positions. And that's sales quantity. So, so yeah. what we have is sales quantity. You can sort yeah. by sales quantity, but we don't yeah. have uh, order. I mean, to me, yeah. our sales quantity is probably more important than the order because, you know, sales quantity or well, revenue. Sometimes, uh, yeah, sometimes order is important because uh, you want, you know, I mean, the order is really important. If you want to know the order, number of orders a customer is make because for, for each order, the customer is making, you have a processing cost. So we would want to keep the orders, the number of orders from a particular customer at the minimum level, but the order to the revenue ratio should be more. So these kind of insights would really help to I see, see, okay. Let's say, for example, a customer keeps ordering every day for 50 rupees, 100 rupees. That's really not what we want because we don't want our people to spend more time in, in that customer with very less average order value. 
Oh so yeah, like shipping kind of also, thing. right? So if yes. I order yes. one thing uh, every day from Amazon, yeah. now Amazon have to pack yeah. a package. But if I order exactly. five things in one hour, they have yeah. their, their shipping cost reduces. So you are right. From yeah. that perspective, order yeah. is important. Yeah, this is this is like uh, you know managing the cost of the company. I mean, if you if you think about everything, there is this triangle: service, cash, and cost. So service is like how you service your customer, right? whether you you know whether you have a good quality product, whether you give it on time. Whether it is, you know, everything is packed correctly. That's that's one thing. And the cash is like how you keep the cash flow in your company. Yeah. Like uh, the cash to cash cycle times and the inventory and stuff like that. And the cost is when this kind of things come into place, the orders and all those things. This create a lot of cost to your company and you want to yep. keep getting money. So that's 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 why it's important. Yeah. All right. So we'll we'll answer the one and three then. I'll go for one now. One is pretty simple. Let me go back. So all you want to do is like, we have a, uh, we have a column called customer type in the customer table. So you just have to pull it here into the legend. So this gives you the split of uh, what is e-commerce and what is brick and mortar. You can, you can basically do it in any, any uh, thing you want. Here, if you want to put it here, you can put it here. Okay, so, so in your horizontal say, bar chart, now you have two, two, two dimension, yeah. basically, you have breakdown. Yeah, yeah, and you can see very clearly that uh, in the customer, the top five customer, so only one customer is e-commerce customer. So the, the rest are brick and mortar. So your business is very strong in the brick and mortar, not, not in any, any other thing. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, I have one, one question from this. Uh, yes. This is a customer level breakdown. If yeah. I want to have a separate pie chart, which is just a pie chart. It just tells me brick and mortar versus e-commerce in 2020. Yeah. How yeah. many revenue I got through e-commerce and how many revenue I got through uh, this? Yeah. So what what you then need to do is like uh, you know, perfect. You just that's what I was looking for. Yep. So it says uh, yeah, 79.5 percent from brick and mortar and 20 percent from e-commerce. Wow. So okay. So this pie chart can also be very useful. Yeah. Yeah. You can you can also use that. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let's move on to the next question. The next question, the third question, uh, how to manage the performance? Like uh, he's interested in like zone analytics. So right now we have revenue by markets. So can you quickly yeah. show how you can change from markets to zone? I think it's a simple changing the field. Yeah. So this one is like, uh, yeah, I mean, you can, you can just change by zoom. You know? that's, 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 uh, that's simple. I'm, no, I'm thinking to create a new dashboard with, with the dynamic. Okay. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I think that would be more, uh, hmm. okay. This is called profit analysis. Let's call it profit analysis. performance yeah, sorry okay so before that we need to set a performance like uh, what performance that we want to measure people on or what performance we want to measure the region on uh, if you say profit margin is one of the i would say profit margin is one of the key driver if you ask me because if your profit margin is good, you will anyways make profit to the company. Yes. Yes. For example, if you if you have, if you create a product for hundred, if you have at least two percent profit margin, you create a profit to the company. Mm. So that's really what I want to uh, have people. I mean, different uh, zones might have different profit margin as a target. For example, Delhi is a, is a, is, a, is a really big market. It should have at least uh, it should have two percent. Then it's fine because it since it has a huge volume, even if it has two percent profit margin, it will create a lot lot of profit for us. So, sorry, I, what I actually wanted to do is like uh, duplicate. duplicate this one. <laughs> yes, <laughs> would never... the power of copy paste. <laughs> <laughs> so I would call this performance insights. All right, and then I do not want just three ones. I would just have, just have one here. So I'll just make it bigger and I will put um, zone. 
on the top, and I can I can build on any time I want. So zone is, the zone is always at the top, mm. and uh, I will reduce the size of this one. Just put it here. Just put it here. Because I want to introduce a new stuff there. So while Hemanand is working on it, uh, yeah. for our viewers, the revenue, you can see clearly that North region is bringing most of the revenue and the yeah. South region has very less. So this is also yeah. a very quick insight that can help you. Yeah, and if you drill down, I mean like, I mean, if you want to know the biggest from the North or the, or the biggest from the South, you can just click South and it immediately shows you all the customers in South. For example, yes. you just have five customers in South. So it's, 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 it's not a big market, like I say, it's, it's not a place where we uh, focus at the moment. Okay, so so the, what I want to create is like let me change this to profit margin. So. You know, North is giving me like 0 0.9 profit margin. That's fine because it's, it's the biggest market price. But that's not something I'm really interested in. What I want to know is like the places which gives me negative profit margin and the places which is, you know, less than what I expect. That, that's really what I want to know. So I'm going to introduce a dynamic uh, filter here, a dynamic, how to call it, uh, kind of a setup. So let me do that. It's called... Just looking for uh, okay. So actually, when you click on a visual and you look look for that, it's not visible. So, so I'm gonna call this as a profit target. And this is gonna be the decimal number. And the minimum is like, uh, let's say minus 0 0.05, which is minus 5% could be my minimum uh, profit margin. And then the maximum could be, let's say 15, 15%, and uh, increment is 0 0.0. So it will then add a slicer to the page mm -hmm. where you can really move. And I'm going to make it to a percentage. So what I want to know is like uh, a red alert, right? The red alert is what uh, I want. So I want my this this particular dashboard to highlight to highlight all the markets when the profit margin is less than the target I set here. Hmm. So I would create a new measure called uh, or or in other words, let's say if the difference between the profit margin and the target I set here is negative, I want this to go red. Hmm. Yeah. So what I would then create is like um, new measure. Target difference. It's nothing but simply the between your profit margin. Profit target value. So, what I can then do here is So I can create a formula here to change my color dynamically. Mm -hmm. 
and I use a rule and I'm going to use the field I created, the target difference now. So if it's greater than or equal to, let's say, minus one, this number, and it's less than zero, and it's less than zero, yeah. If it's negative, I want it to become red. And so currently I've set my base at minus five. So all the all the all the regions are are better than minus one. Yes. The least is minus two point seven. So that's why it's not changing anything. So let me change it to minus one percent. So you yes. can see immediately the North Lucknow is highlighted. It's 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 not it's not performing up to the target. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's say we want to say one person. So these are the these are the reasons which is not even having your as a, a profit margin as even one person, mm -hmm. and you can you can basically do like this. Like you can start from here. You can see not as having not one person, or you can, let's say you keep it two person, and you select further north. So now you will see all the places where the profit margin is not two person. The accumulated profit margin is not totally two person, Perfect. or you can just drill down and. Uh, see the, all, all the places there where your profit margin is not up to the mark and then you can further drill down and then see all your customers perfect and so this, there's yeah, there's this, a, this can help you identify people whom you want to fire desperately <laughs> <laughs> or 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 if you are <laughs> yeah for example <laughs> yes this the the customers are tagged to the people right sometimes some people are the key account managers of some customers so if you want to look at the customer level so what you can then do is like Let's put the customer name here and then have a further build down. So, all the customers which have profit margin is in two percent, you would see it here. Perfect. This, this is, is awesome. Yeah, this would give you a very good idea of what uh, what is your company's performance and what is what is working good and what is not working good, and all the stuff. And uh, connected to this, I want to add one more thing I just thought about this. I mean, more often you always want to compare. If something is going bad, you really want to compare, okay, what happened last year at the same time, right? Mm. That's something you're really interested to know. So what I would then add is a very quick measure. It's, it's a very simple measure. It's not gonna need a lot of thinking. Uh, okay, I'm gonna call, I'm gonna create a new measure. It's called revenue. Mm. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna create a new measure called revenue last year. And it's nothing but a calculate. Revenue, and then use a same period last year. It's very, it's very easy to remember, and you call CY date. It's just a date. So let's say I want to see, uh, I want to use a different chart here. So I want to see revenue, revenue last year. So I'm going to make my revenue last year in a different color, like more like a gray because it's it's last year. It is, yeah, like it's past. Yeah, it's past. And uh, I'm going to add my line value as a profit margin because that's something I'm really interested. In. So this gives you, you know, like overall a very good picture. Let's say, uh, let's let's see who's your who's your biggest customer. See, your biggest customer is. This one, right? So you can see about this particular customer. Mm. How, I think, sorry, we have saved it something else. Yeah. Uh, I think we need to change this to the. Yeah, the settings there to just uh, yeah. cross yeah. whatever. We need to change this to the cross highlighting. Cross, sorry, cross filtering is of cross highlighting. So you see like, okay, this is this is quite good in terms of last year, but you can see June sales have definitely dropped. The year to year comparison is definitely is much, much lower than uh, what you thought. And uh, you, can, you can do it at the region level. The idea is like, guys, you can, you can do it at the topmost region, not the south, the region or the north, the central. And if you have the further questions, you click one button and then you go to the further level. If you have yep. further questions, you click one more button and you go to the further level. So, 
that's that's how it works. And you, you can also add products here too if you want to even go in your little cloud. Just go to your product course and then see how your products are performing. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's pretty much. Um, I think that answers uh, the question. Perfect. So let's move on to the last the question. Yeah. Yep. We can spare maybe another like 10 minutes, five, 10 minutes. Uh, looks like we have answered. So Jagan Info, yeah. again, thank you for the detailed question. I think we have answered many of these concerns already. For example, yeah. revenue by zone, by adding the zone specific graph. Uh, yeah. we, add, uh, we address sales quantity, revenue trend. Uh, is, it, is there something which we have not addressed and which, which you would yeah. like to highlight, Hamanan? I think uh, he's asking for the last five years revenue, which is not available, fortunately. We don't have the data. Okay. We just have last, last I think, three years or four years data. I think 2017, mm -hmm. yeah, we just have four years. Mm -hmm. So that's something uh, yeah, we can't do. But even then, if you just change the five to four, you have it. We have the total yes. four years revenue and we have the, the margin, the contribution. And uh, identify less revenue getting customers. We have done that. We have showed up uh, the things where, like, which customers contribute to the, the percentage of uh, the revenue and the top revenue getting customers. We have done that. Identify the markets, which is which sales is very, very less. Yes, we have done that. We have shown the markets which have a very low sales quantity and also a very low sales uh, revenue contribution percentage or the profit contribution percentage. Uh, all these dynamics, we have done that. And display the written products quantity from zone customers. This is a very good insight. I mean, most of the most of the companies would, uh, the retail companies would struggle from this thing. And the, the returns would cost a lot of money because uh, it, it will contribute to negative margin. So, if you get a lot of returns from the particular market, so it is the responsibility of that particular uh, the particular market director to make sure that we don't get returns. So it, it again, you know, it, 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 it hampers the company in multiple directions. It, uh, it hampers your cost. It hampers your customer, uh, you know, the customer value, the customer, uh, the thing that you generate for the customer, the, the, the loyalty. Yeah, so that, that's a very good thing. But unfortunately, we don't have the data for, for the returns, but it will be very good to look at. And if which products increasing more revenue from zone market, yes, we have uh, we have done that. So what what we can uh, you know simply do is like to see the emerging products. So if you just go back here, and then uh, so instead of instead of putting the profit margin, so if you put the revenue contribution. I think that's 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 time divided, so we can't do that. But you can you can create a different measure and then uh, see how your revenue is growing. The revenue contribution is growing uh, month by month. Currently, we see how the revenue is growing. So if it's growing or declining, we see that. But you can also see the revenue contribution. If the contribution is increasing or decreasing, so there's also possibility to do that. Yep. And, uh, yeah, inventory is another big topic. Inventory has its own uh, how to call it. It's its own tutorial. It's, it's, it's one of the places where you have lots of data and it connects to all, all parts of the business. If, if you take inventory, it connects to the sales, it connects to the marketing, it connects to the supply chain, it connects to the finance. That's, that's one core part, which is, you know, like which has its tentacles all around the business. Uh, so Jagan, yeah, I mean, what this we can, is a very, yeah, what we can do is we can maybe try to build a separate project in future yeah. with more data. Yeah. Maybe we can build it yeah. in Tableau, but I think the inputs you have given here are extremely useful. Uh, I promise yeah. this will be the seed for my next project for sure. <laughs> yes, definitely. I, I think we can we can start on more project, or we can build up on this. Like it's, it's a very good uh, you know uh, it could be a very good sequel for this for this project. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah sequel Bahubali Part Two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. something like that. Yeah, definitely. Okay. I, mean, I can see. I can see. Inventory can go to a new concept. It's, I mean, inventory and the return specially it all will come under supply chain. Uh, since I've worked in supply chain before, so I've I've, I've real keen interest to to you know like uh, to talk about this stuff. Yep. Uh, I think we are done with the dashboard yes. building, right, Hemanan? Now. Yes. Yes. Okay. So uh, I, we we can probably stop sharing the screen now. Yeah. So everyone, this was a uh, part two with phase two. 
uh, the dashboard that Heman and built has like three different pages. We are going to share uh, this on my GitHub. So I'm going to upload a new PBIX file. It and the link of that PBIX file will be in the video description below and we'll upload it to GitHub. So go to my GitHub and you will be able to download what Hamanand has built. I also encourage you to uh, build this, follow this tutorial and build this dashboard on your own and may maybe make some changes uh, as per your own preference. Okay. Uh, Hamanand, can you st stop sharing the screen now? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Stop. Uh, so uh, thanks, Hamanan. I can't thank you enough. It it was such an experience, such a great experience. Pleasure is mine, though. I've already told you. Pleasure is mine. Yeah, we have, we have already mentioned this multiple times, but it's uh, yeah. uh, this this is very good because we both work in industry and we have given uh, many viewers who might be students a feel of how projects are executed in big companies. Okay, that was the whole motive yeah. behind doing this project. And um, I am also going to upload the GIF that you give me, Hemanan. So if someone wants to use Excel as a source in this project, mm -hmm. then I will upload my Excel files on the GitHub. Again, the video description below will contain the link. Okay. So okay. it will have all the files and I will provide the GIFs of Hemanan's recording. Yeah. So you can just uh, build the whole dashboard from scratch just by yeah. using Excel if you don't want to worry about MySQL. Okay, yeah. so we'll have that as well. And this concludes uh, this project series. Uh, again, thank you very much. And uh, hopefully we can work on this kind of uh, different type of project maybe in the future. Definitely, I'm looking forward to that. Though. It was really great working with this project. I mean, like, especially the, the kind of ideas we discussed and the kind of feedback we got from uh, the viewers and, uh, and, you know, and see that it does some real impact. And a few people really said, okay, it has helped them. And uh, somebody from LinkedIn posted a project. They did it on their own. Then, then they posted a project saying, okay, uh, thanks for this. And that, that, that was really great to see. I mean, uh, can, we can help out some people out there. And of course, like I said, it's, it's more than sharing knowledge. I think it, it's, it's also learning something new is also happening while doing this. Exactly. So yeah, um, thank you all. Thank you all. It was Bye. a real experience. Yeah.